Hello everyone and welcome to this machine learning playlist. Today we are covering an important topic. So whether you are someone who is absolute beginner or you have some experience with machine learning, this playlist has been designed in such a way that it will be easy to follow for everyone. Also packed with lots of values and information and it will be really helpful for you, especially if you are preparing for a machine learning based job role like data analyst or data scientist. So please subscribe to the channel and drop a like below to support our work and without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. All right, so today we are going to cover the first machine learning algorithm within this playlist, which is linear regression. It is one of the most foundational topic among all the other machine learning algorithms, which means if you figure out to have a clear understanding and in-depth intuition on this topic, then it will become a lot more easier for you to understand other machine learning algorithms like logistic regression, SVM, etc. Indeed, we will understand that how this algorithm actually works and and what are the assumption before using this particular algorithm because within the pool of all the other machine learning algorithms if you are using this specific one linear regression then there should be some reason that why are you choosing it a part of that we will also see that what are the advantages or disadvantages of using linear regression in short we are going to have a complete 360 degree understanding on this topic so that we can become confident enough to tackle any kind of question coming for an interview based on this topic. So without any further delay, let's get started. So over here, I have plotted this diagram, which is actually a made up data by me, where we have number of hours studied plotted against marks obtained. So number of hours studied is actually the independent variable and marks obtained is the dependent variable which depends on the factor of number of hours studied. Now it is very important that you get yourself familiar with the terms like independent variable or dependent variable because going ahead within this playlist we are going to use these terms a lot. So it is better that you don't get confused yourself with these terms. Secondly, we can also see that between these two variables, there is a linear relationship. What I mean to say is if we observe carefully this data set, then you will find that as the number of hours studied is increasing, the marks obtained by a student is also increasing. And this indicates that there is a linear relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So I will quickly erase this and this linear relationship is one of the assumption that we hold before using a linear regression algorithm. Now, when we want to use a linear regression algorithm, what we actually want to do is using the machine learning algorithm, we are trying to draw a best fit straight line that goes throughout all these observations, not all the observations, but most of the observations in such a way that the loss is as less as possible. Now, if you're someone who is not that familiar with loss function or cost function, then I highly insist that you watch the previous lecture that was dedicated on this particular topic of loss function or cost function. For the time being, you need to understand that we want to draw this best fit line in such a way that the distance from all the other data points with this straight line should be as less as possible and then only it can give us the best prediction. Now let's try to understand this in more details. Rather I should say that let's try to understand the equation of a straight line in more details. So let's say that the straight line we are trying to draw is denoted by this term y which is equals to b0 plus b1 x1. Now let me give you a proper breakdown for this equation. So B0 is nothing but the point from where we are actually initiating the straight line, the bias, which in our situation falling over here at this point. This is the point from where we are starting to draw the straight line for us. X1 is the value of the independent variable, which in our case is this one, number of R study. So over here, we are trying to talk about one specific value of number of R study. It could be, let's say two hours, it could be, let's say four hours or maybe eight hours. And B1 
is the value of this slope this right here and this is also called the weights now within the field of machine learning you will hear this term a lot that the algorithm is trying to calculate the weights and weights are nothing but how much importance you are providing to this variable and these are the major components of a straight line even if you try to apply some common sense then if we want to draw a straight line that goes through these data points in such a way that the loss is minimum or the differences from the other data points is minimum then all we are doing is nothing but achieve the best value for this bias and this flow and by adjusting these two parameters we can finally achieve this line let's try to understand this thing in more details in the further slide so again we have the same problem plotted three times so this is figure one this is figure two and this is figure three in the first attempt we started with a random b0 and b1 value which is nothing but the origin from where we are starting the straight line and the value of this slope and you can see with respect to this straight line the loss is too much with respect to all the other data points the difference is too much so definitely it is not doing that good in terms of prediction in the second attempt we do another iteration and we try to adjust the slope of the straight line by changing it a bit and now you can see it is doing comparatively better with respect to the first attempt over here now it is going through most of the data points like here this one this this and the loss as well has been minimized compared to the previous one but it looks like still the performance can be improved a bit and finally in the third attempt we readjust the value of b0 and b1 which is the slope and then it looks like now we have achieved the best values for b0 and b1 in order to draw the best fit line and it is doing really well in terms of prediction you might have a question in your mind that although this straight line is doing really good in terms of predicting this data point this one this one this one and this one but what about these it is still missing on these values so the answer is although it is missing out on few of the data points but what we actually wanted to achieve is that the difference or the loss with respect to all the other data points should be as minimum as possible and this particular straight line is actually doing that for us even if you think practically then machine learning algorithms or any machine learning project is not supposed to do the prophecy what it is supposed to do is it is supposed to help us by predicting an outcome which is more likely to happen let's say in a weather prediction app if it is telling you that tomorrow it is going to be rainy or let's say it is going to be sunny then it is not guaranteed that tomorrow it will definitely rain rather what it tries to tell you is that the probability of raining tomorrow is high so it is suggested that you carry an umbrella with you if you are going outside or if possible then stay indoors similarly if you are typing an email on gmail application it gives you some suggestions which is not always correct that you want to use but mostly you will feel like it is auto completing your message that you will be more likely to choose but not all the time so i hope that the confusion is now slightly clear to you and now let's pay attention to these two equations that i have mentioned below which is linear regression equation using a single variable like we had over here in the above examples and linear regression equation with multiple variables that i will now talk about so in the example so far we have seen that how an independent variable like number of hours studied can help you to predict a dependent variable which is marks obtained that is explained by this particular equation right here that we have also seen a breakdown previously but let's say that you have a dependent variable of price of the house and over here you have multiple independent variables like number of bedrooms that could be the first variable second could be number of bathrooms third could be the area of the house fourth could be let's say that how old the house is and over here you will need to have an understanding of linear equation with multiple variables so let's try to understand this b0 will be constant the origin from where we are trying to draw the best fit line or the hyperplane by the way don't get confused when i use this term hyperplane hyperplane is nothing but an equivalent term like a best fit straight line but the term hyperplane is used when we are talking in terms of multiple variables so in short the term straight line is used in terms of a single variable and when we are doing multiple straight lines in multiple dimensions which in case of multiple variables like this one then we use the term of hyperplane and over here b1 will be the weight 
given to the first variable this one b2 will be the weights given to the second variable like this one and similarly bm will be the weights assigned to the mth variable in your data set all right no rocket science pretty much simple and straightforward so far all right so far we have seen the positive relationship between two variables and independent and dependent variable and by seeing positive relation what i mean is when the value of your independent variable is increasing the value of your dependent variable is also likely to increase this is called a positive correlation but it isn't necessary that you will always have a positive correlation you may also come across some scenarios where as the value of your independent variable increases the value for your dependent variable will decrease in that case the equation for the straight line will change like this b naught minus b1 x1 let's try to understand this further so within this figure let's try to consider the independent variable as temperature and within the dependent variable let's consider cell quantity of heaters or geysers that people mostly use in winters so logically if the temperature is increasing let's say it is increasing from 10 degrees to let's say 25 degrees to let's say 35 degrees that means we are now hitting the summers in that case of course the cell in heaters or any appliance which people use mostly in winter season the cell for that will also decrease it will not increase along with the temperature in the weather and therefore the equation will change like this so starting from the origin point which is b naught the slope of the straight line will decrease rather than increasing and then we will have the weights assigned to the variable which is temperature we have in this case okay so far we have covered the straight line equation we have understood the relationship between an independent and dependent variable whether it is a positive relation or a negative relation we have understood that what are the concept behind a single variable and multiple variable now let's try to understand ahead few important things which will be extremely important for your interviews and we are starting with one of the burning topic in the interview which is basic assumptions for linear regression so the first point says that there should be a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables that we have seen so far that if the value of your independent variable is increasing then along with that the value for your dependent variable should also increase or decrease it can go in either of the direction but the point is there should be a linear relationship what i mean is as the value of your independent variable is increasing the value of your dependent variable should not remain stagnant it should either go upside or downside there should be no or very little multicollinearity now this is a completely new term to us but very important to understand as well and it is not that difficult so multicollinearity is nothing but the relation between two independent variables let's try to understand that let's say that we are trying to predict the price of a house and the features or the independent variables which are given to us is the number of bedrooms and let's say the second variable is number of bathrooms and let's assume that within our data set it is arranged in such a way that every time the number of bedroom is increasing number of bathroom is also increasing which means if we have two bedrooms then we will also have two bathrooms if we have four bedrooms then we will have four bathrooms and if we have eight bedrooms then we have eight bathrooms although it is not that practical but i am just giving you as a made up example just to have the understanding on collinearity so collinearity is nothing but a linear relationship between two independent variables and going by the assumption for a linear regression it says that two variables should not hold a linear relationship third assumption is homoscedasticity so over here i will make sure that i leave you with no jargons at all and let's try to understand the meaning of homoscedasticity so please pay attention here on this figure which is coming straight from the website of geeks for geek here we have two observations plotted side by side let's focus on the left side observation and if you see carefully the distribution of the observation is not varying as we are going ahead with the increasing value of the independent variable it feels like the entire observations are fit under an imaginary funnel and this nature is actually called the homoscedasticity on the other hand if you will pay attention to the right hand side figure then you will see that observations are scattering along with the increasing value of the independent variable and this is clearly not holding the property 
of homoscedasticity and this nature of the data set is actually called heteroscedasticity and within this particular example it is not suggested to use linear regression linear regression is more likely to perform well when we have data distribution like this one and in a nutshell this is a really good example for homoscedasticity and the final point is normality of residual so let's try to understand this one as well so residuals are nothing but these data points that our straight line is missing on and by the term normality of residual it means that the variation of residuals from the straight line within this area should be equals to the variation of the residual with respect to the straight line within this area and let's say we have the observations in such a way that this normality of residual is getting imbalanced or it is let's say too much over here in this point but it is less over here in that case again it is not suggested to use linear regression and ideally if your data set has a homoscedasticity nature in that case you will not have this issue as well so i will quickly erase this and this is pretty much it that you need to understand around the basic assumptions for linear regression now let's quickly jump into the advantages or disadvantages for using this algorithm and let's start with the advantages first and of course the implementation and interpretation is very easy because this algorithm itself is really intuitive it is not that you don't have a clear understanding that what is actually happening behind the training of the model so the first point is that the implementation and interpretation is very easy because it is easier to have a good understanding that how this algorithm actually works it performs really well with linearly separable data that we have already seen above using regularization dimension reduction techniques etc makes it easier to handle overfitting now so far within this playlist we have not covered the topic of regularization or dimension reduction techniques this is why i would not stress much on this point at this moment but going ahead we are going to have a dedicated lecture on both these topics and then you can come back to this point again and it will make more sense to you and lastly it can be used for extrapolation to some degree now let's quickly understand the meaning of extrapolation so over here within this example we had the data points up till this point and then we had this best fit line going across all the observations now let's say if someone wants to predict that how much marks can be obtained if the number of hours studied is here let's say this value is 50 then we can say going by the prediction that the value will be falling over here which is very close to the actual value and this prediction within the range of our observation is actually called interpolation so i'll write it here interpolation but let's say that someone is trying to predict the marks that can be obtained with number of hours studied at this point over here at a value that our model or the algorithm has not seen before so the actual value with respect to this point may fall over here or maybe here or maybe here anywhere and going by our straight line it can predict that it should fall over here at this point which will be still very close to the actual value however since this prediction is falling outside the scope of the previously observed values hence this prediction will be called extrapolation and linear regression is not ideally suggested to do extrapolation but it can be used to some degree for extrapolation as well although we have dedicated machine learning algorithms which are specifically used for extrapolation that we will discover later on within this playlist okay so we are good in terms of understanding the advantages of using linear regression now let's have a quick look on disadvantages as well first thing will be that it is sensitive to outliers of course if you have some observations like this it is easy to draw a best fit line like this but let's say you have an outlier over here or here let's say you have couple of outliers then just to avoid the loss with respect to these data points your entire model will try to shift this straight line from this to this and now this will lead to mispredict these values and this is why it is very important to get rid of these outliers before you apply a linear regression algorithm to your model let's erase this quickly it is prone to noise and overfitting now let's understand noise first let's say that you have a loss over here on this point and somewhere below the line over here is the point where the loss can be minimized in order to predict the best fit line and if your model is converging to this minimum loss point in a straightforward way then it is a good thing because it will help you to save time 
But let's say it is wandering around like this, 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 and then finally it reaches the global minimum point or the minimum loss. In that case, it indicates that the machine learning algorithm is taking a lot of time in order to minimize the loss. And this delay is called nothing but the noise. Noise in terms of converging to the minimum loss point. So I will quickly erase this one as well. And overfitting is a term that we will explore further when we will cover the topic of bias and variance. But just to simplify this for you, when we train a machine learning algorithm on a data point like this, we use only 70 to 80 percent of the data for training purpose, which means we use only this much of data in order to draw the best fit line. And we leave the rest of the data points around 20 to 30 percent of the data point for testing purpose just to check that the line that we have drawn is it actually good in order to predict a value that could be very close to the actual value and let's say in this case your line is predicting very well with the training data but not doing good with the testing data that is a typical example of overfitting that we always try to avoid in the field of machine learning or data science. So let me quickly erase this one as well. Not efficient in handling missing values. So this will not perform well if you have a lot of missing values within your data set. And sometimes a lot of feature engineering is required that we will explore once we do a project using linear regression model. However, if you are someone who has already done projects using linear regression algorithm, then most probably you are already aware of all these terms. And along with this, we have also reached the end of this lecture. So we have learned about linear regression today. We have seen that under what circumstances it is suggested to use this algorithm and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this model. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for your time.